it's Jerry Denry of the MathWorks. So uh, in this video, um, again, it's going to be kind of fun stuff. And we're going to essentially go from a model from scratch. You know, so I'll just open this up right now, open up a new model. And we're going to connect to my Arduino processor and motor shield. OK, so anyways, I'm going to go to the Simulink browser. You'll see that I installed the Simulink support package for Arduino hardware. And I'll just go get one of these blocks. Right? And so it's going to be a motor. And uh, I'm going to hook up um, you know, normal Simulink blocks to it. And so I'm going to go get a step function. And so um, we're going to apply full voltage. And so we'll start off with a full connection. And then we'll switch to off at a step time of one second. All right. And we'll send that in like that. And then I'll introduce a gain which will convert it to kind of the number that that this block's looking for and so what this block is looking for is some percentage and it can be a hundred percent it can be minus 100 percent but you know a scaling of what the dc source is all right and just for your information my dc source is 11.1 .1. and so by sending in a you know this guy being one i'll make this a multiplication of 100. All right. And, you know, you'll notice that there's no like hardware page like we used before. And, and I'll, I'll just hit run. I'll show that, you know, we'll run into an error pretty quickly. And, um, you know, it's some sort of error associated with, you know, the, the uh, Arduino base and all that kind of stuff. But it's a, a somewhat cryptic error message, but it's a really a pretty easy fix too. All right. And so let's go to modeling configuration parameters for this model we're currently working on. Um, we're going to see in a second that we're not going to run this in variable time step, but the real solution is go to hardware implementation and choose the board that we're using, which is the Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010. And you can see lots of other boards that we do similar things for, just kind of showing up in that list. Notice this GRT.TLC just got converted to ERT.TLC. And that's a code generation thing. And it's essentially telling you that it's going to be using embedded coder, which gives you a lot of, um, I'll just say, flexibility and capability to get the code that you want optimized for the processor that you're going to run it on. All right. And we'll see that our solver is now fixed up by that same selection. And I'm going to switch to a discrete calculation, meaning it's, I call it the what you see is what you get. It's very kind of self-contained by what's appearing in that model. And then the final thing will be will it be a time step of 0 0.01 seconds. And for those controls folks who like to talk in terms of frequency, that'll be 100 hertz, All right? And so with that, now this hardware page does show up. And I'll do what I did in the previous example and just hit monitor and tune. OK. And so. You know, there is a code gen generation process that those blocks in that Simulink model are be being converted into C code and C code specially um, um, formed to run on this Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010 processor. OK, so that's good news. We've got a successful build. And so probably in a matter of, let's say, three or four seconds, it'll start spinning. And there you go. Okay, so we'll let this finish out. And I'm going to go here and not let it run for the full 10 seconds. And so let's put in, oh, I don't know, let's say five seconds. All right, and so we saw it spin, but we have no measurements. And so the, the next part of this will be let's add some measurements. And so I'll go to this Arduino motor carrier. And we'll grab the encoder block. You know, I'm, I'm doing some things relying on defaults and just kind of knowing kind of the way I hooked it up that I'm connecting into this blue one right here. And again, knowing the motor shield a little bit, you know, that I know that that's encoder one. And so that one that's showing up there, that's between the option of one and two. Um, so I'm going to keep it at one. And I am going to add kind of a sampling rate of 0 0.01 to match the rate at which we're running this to. So I'll click on that. And let's do the same thing for a battery. So this is going to simply measure 
the battery voltage. All right. I'll put in that same sample rate and let's put in a couple of scopes. All right, so capture that in that one and we'll drag one down here too. And I think we're ready to hit the monitor and tune button one more time. And so again, the code will be regenerated and recompiled and, and, and you know, kind of loaded onto this processor again. And that's this little USB connection between the processor and my laptop is facilitating that that um, transfer, you know, of the algorithm onto the processor. Okay, so it looks like we got a successful build, and there it goes. All right, so motor moved again, and this time we have some measurements. All right, and so that's what we're getting from our encoder, and it rotated 5,000 somethings. Yeah, and right now I'm going to just call it 5,000 counts. And that the voltage, which I know to be 11.1 .1 volts, we'll see that that's measured as something on the order of 856. All right. And, and so this is kind of revealing something that's, you know, a really important part of hardware. And I call it, it's the inside game. And hopefully that's uh, not too too harsh. But, but that you really need to kind of know the choices that were made by those who are providing the hardware and those that are kind of helping you develop this from a hardware point of view. And quite often they will be different than kind of the person developing controls and, and overall system software. So, so, so anyways, this information needs to be acquired properly. And, and the main thing I, I know is that 11.1 .1 volts is the same thing as whatever 856 is on these counts. And then doing some separate work uh, last week yeah, I came to recognize that for the encoder, 360 degrees is represented by 455 of these counts. And then finally, instead of just doing, you know, like, you know, one or 100 percent, I want to switch this to voltage. And so I'm going to apply six volts, right? So I'll call this voltage now. Okay. And so again, knowing my DC source is 11.1, .1, I need to divide this by 11.1. All right, so whatever six divided by 11.1 .1 is, I'm gonna multiply that by 100 to essentially uh, achieve that voltage command. So let's hit the tune, monitor and tune button one more time. Okay, so it looks like we got a successful build again. So I'll just kind of hold this up and it should be running. Probably, there you go. And we'll check that we got this right. And so we'll check to see if we got the voltage right. It looks pretty good, 11.1, .1, holds that value the whole time. And there's our angle, and it looks like it spun somewhere. Well, of course, you can use scopes the way you always do in Simulink. You kind of see what, to what angle did it go to. So it looks like uh, 2,180. So whatever that is, I'd imagine that's probably about five or six rotations. Um, all I can say is, you know, as you do this, you know, especially the first time, and you 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 drag things into a Simulink model, and you hit a button, and you make a motor do something. Um, it's quite a thrill. It's really, you know, kind of exciting to make, you know, hardware do anything, you know, but to be able to make it do things kind of the precision level, because you got the mathematical tools to define precision. So, so effectively with a tool like Simulink, you know, you see where this can take you. All right. And so we're going to probably do two or three more videos and we'll, we'll kind of show how did we get such a useful model that helped us develop such a good controller using you know, especially this little feed forward piece that we saw in the previous example. But but, but anyways, this one, yeah, it, it's quite a thrill to see all this kind of work as well as it does. All right. Thank you.